Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Hiroja Shai. Hello, uh, this is Hiroja Shai, uh, the moderator of this channel, which is F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot show. And this is my live reaction to 407. Um, <clears throat> not proxy or something to that extent. So this was a show. Um, I wasn't expecting any of this. I don't think anyone was expecting what we were getting. I do know uh, within the fandom that many people, because of how grounded the show has been in many aspects of reality, particularly dealing with mental health issues, that there was something in Elliot's past that caused him to have this personality disorder. And it wasn't just simply him, you know, uh, jumping out of the window and, and knocking his head, which kind of did a fake out for some people in the fandom. Maybe it's, you know, brain damage or neurological uh, dysfunction. But many people have stated that something extremely traumatic um, had occurred in Elliot's life that caused the splits that he has. And most people lean towards his mother, like consistent abuse. That's a, you know um, a close uh, probability of him being the way he is. And don't get me wrong, his mother was very abusive. From what we have seen in the dynamics that Darlene and uh, Elliot have had when speaking about her, in their brief little interactions that we've had with Elliot's mother, but. One of the things that people have written and talked about when talking about the type of disorder that Elliot has is that it typically is sexual abuse. And I, I did not expect the answer that we got. Um, uh, it kind of makes sense when you reflect upon why Elliot has these um, missing time in the blocks if you will of the nature of the trauma and the nature of that incident that occurred with in his room in the window and particularly at the day that his father died at the uh, movie theater where he just simply was cold-blooded and walked away and in essence that's where mr robot you know manifests himself fully either from that window or in the on days coming um to protect Elliot, that he, that's why he left his father like that. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot to process. I do appreciate the fact that the show and the, you know, the network or whatever at the end of each episode, when it, because of the heady nature of the show, like uh, each show that dealt with suicide had a suicide number, this has a domestic violence number for people to call. Um, but wow, it's it's gonna like on the rewatch from whenever we get the ending of this. I mean, there's gonna be a lot when you go back through that you're gonna view and see in a different light, knowing this bit of knowledge about Edward Alderson, and it's just really sad. I mean, it's clear from the end of the episode that Elliot is broken. It has always been broken, but like really fundamentally broken. And kind of time is running out for him and Krista uh, because he still has to do that hack. He hasn't hooked that back to Darlene like he's been preoccupied, mind you. Uh, so, and you still have Vera's boys that are gonna come back and find Vera um, dead or dying on the floor of Krista's apartment. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. I thought they were actually, the way it was going, they were gonna have this partnership that uh, Vera's been looking for. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I have said this in the past, that people have not been very extremely security conscious in these episodes. Like with, I said, you know, Darlene didn't lock that door in Angela's apartment. That's how Dom got in. There was no security, no proximity sensors, no like, alert or anything um elliot didn't follow olivia 
to make sure she wasn't I thought like that when I initially saw that episode going for a gun um, people have been turning their backs on people when they probably shouldn't have and as a result of that though their overconfidence or, or their um, well for Vera overconfidence and arrogance um, their lack of situational awareness they got got in this case Vera got got uh, <laughs> Again, the next episode seems to be dealing with just the same day again. Spoilers for that. Um, I don't know where in the time frame because the meeting is at 9 o'clock. This takes place. Uh, it could still be, you know, in the afternoon. It could still be like maybe like 5 o'clock, 5.30. Uh, that everything's kind of taken down if you count for travel time. And if their episode is taking place like in the real time frame of how long the episode was, is how long they were in the apartment, but oh. and it was raining and lightning and God, the acting for this for this episode, I I expect some for either for direction or writing or for acting like um, Rami uh, getting another um, nod, uh, Glory Rubin, I think it's Elliot. Veneer is the actor who plays um, Vera. Uh, I expect I would expect their names to be towards the end of for Emmys and stuff like that. Um, it was phenomenal acting on their part. I you know SAGs or uh, any of the television awards they definitely earned it and deserved it. It was very much um, a play, if you will, like a closed room play. I could almost imagine. Like this is something that uh, uh, like actors and actresses in college or community college would study this particular television script to everything learning from shooting and things like that because it's very closed in, it's very play-like. So even just as a play format because you're basically just two rooms so you don't have to build out such a big space. Primarily three key primary actors with two uh, secondary actors so for five people in total I can you don't really have to give too much context like you I don't think you really have to know like the backstory of the rest of the season or something to act this particular uh, dynamic out I don't think you have to have too much context because a lot of that context is given within that space and time you know basically Vera has Krista Krista is your psychologist you are you're gonna work for me. These are my hood, hood, you know, you know, henchmen. And there's another personality. So you have, if they were gonna manifest Mr. Robot, you would have another actor. So six actors really, of going in and back and forth, of, you know, for this. So there's potential for that. Or the fact that the, the actor, um, will project in some fashion. I, I'm not really sure how that would go for plays really. But I would see that this is something that's studied and, and things of that nature. Um, it's very well done. It's well, very well time managed. You know, it was commercial free, so it was a, there was no breaks. Um, <laughs> I do have to say that the little marks for Tina Axe was very Quentin Tarantino, like his chapters he does for his movies. Uh, I know that Sam Esmail does these little nods, and I think this is the very most um, Quentin uh, nod that he has done. Again, I don't know where the show is going from here. Um, there is a time crunch. There's so many balls in the air. We don't really, we know, I, we know for the preview this, uh, the Darlene and Dom stuff, but we still haven't checked in with Price. Uh, check in, we need to check back in with White Rose. Um, <laughs> is this hack going to go off? Where's Leon? Because is he going to pop up again? Because I thought he was going to pop up guns and blazing that didn't happen um so janice you know uh yeah so there's so, a lot of balls in the air and they're supposed to like hack and take down uh, the dance group by nine o'clock tonight and the um washington township plan is getting packed up it's supposed to ship out so there's a time frame and we're episode eight coming so we'll see how things go um Again, I do believe this thing is going to end very bloody for everybody, but um, just wow, just phenomenal acting all around, great episode, I'm looking forward to the next one, I'm 
thrilled by the things that are happening. Um, even though I'm going to do a, th I say it um, in my review of episode 406 that I'm going to do a theory episode. I really don't have too many new theories. It's just maybe like the cream of the crop has risen when it comes to theories about what could potentially happen with the show. But for the most part, just... So this is Hiroja Shive. Uh, this is my live reaction of uh, uh, season 407 or episode uh, 407 of Mr. Robot. I'm logging off for now. Um, and next time, friends.